So that was the widest we ever got, was the wide camera. But when you wanted to zoom in, you stitched, morphed the wide to the medium, and then the medium to the long one. And that's how those zooms were made later. That is awesome. What's going on, Indie Muggle? Today we are talking with Larry Fong, AC cinematographer. He shot Batman vs. Superman, 300, Super 8, Watchmen. So many movies out there. He's had an amazing career and has shot some amazing movies. So today we're gonna to talk about storytelling with cinematography, how to find a visual style per narrative piece that you're working on. We're gonna draw out a couple of these scenes here with lighting diagrams, as well as talking about a little bit of secret sauce that Larry's sort of adding into a lot of the movies that he's working on. So, hi Larry, how are hey, you? Hey, what's up? Doing good, how are you? Excellent. <laughs> nice. What I want to ask today is, <laughs> after you've read a script as a cinematographer, how do you go about crafting kind of the visual identity of a movie? Mm. And what I want to do is I want to take three movies that you've shot today, okay. talk about them in categories that we've come up with. So the movies that I want to talk about today are 300, Super 8, okay. and then Batman vs. Superman. Three okay. kind of drastically different movies, and I think you more than really a lot of VPs that I know have shot a wide range of big Hollywood blockbusters. Mm -hmm. And in those movies too, I want to talk about how from the script you approach the camera lenses filtration, how you approached any lighting inspirations, or how you decided you were going to light this movie. Coloring, of course, a huge aspect of the film. Mm -hmm. And then if there's any Fong secret sauce that you drizzled on top of it, anything that maybe we uh, aren't mentioning here that was special that you approached it with, hmm. and where you, went about, where you went about that. Okay, I'll try. All right, so for this first scene, we're looking at 300. The goal was to be painterly because the original graphic novel was watercolor, yeah, right? Yeah. And it had this look, although that's not really what it looked like. The deal was to make it look watercolor-y. So we had to stylize the people and the ground and the buildings were all affected by this process. Now this process was a really weird 10 step process yeah. and layers and blah, 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 blah to get that. Like you can't just go into a DI and tweak some buttons and get that look. Mm -hmm. It's a complicated recipe, it's secret, but it's really weird. And that's why you've seen parodies and people trying to be like that and they can't really get that look. Mm -hmm. But. I'm sorry, Larry, the idea of cool. you watching parodies of 300 just <laughs> brings a smile to me. Face for some reason. My I friends who worked why. on those, I looked like, what? How do we get that vibe? Because if you look at it, really, the, the, it's funny that in Watchmen people say, like, it's right out of the comic book. It's not, it's not really. No, not at all. You can't if do you it like that. If you think that, we did our yeah. job, but if you look at it, no, it's not like the coverage. No. Or, movie coverage is really boring, right? So you had the kind of reference material, but did you have a color palette to work with? Um, yeah, there were concept paintings that were done by the art department. And I think the goal was just to make everything look, you know, surreal and, and painterly. So we had to do a lot of tests. So we would do tests, film them, and I was trying to think what's the best way to light it so that when it's affected later, that'll still look, it'll look cool. So that was a lot of testing. So it turned out what ended up being the best was this kind of soft overall top light was almost over everything. Oh, actually, oh, listen, I remember this. Remember this, the lighting changed just for that one shot? Because that goes, wouldn't be cool if they're in silhouette. Oh. So you saw it like didn't really make sense. Yeah. But he knew it'd be cool graphically. It does look shot. cool. So suddenly lights were off to make them in silhouette for that one shot. But for all this, this is our usual top light. Okay. So show should, us what that looks like real quick. It's built so like they're going to that circle, right? Okay. But then there's the buildings are over here, but not. Okay. Right. And they're walking. They go to the thing. But up here on stage, we had big silks. Much bigger than this. Yep. Because it covered the whole stage. But they're big <laughs> silks. Oh, long steady cam shot. Oh, uh, okay, cool. See? Big set. That's not green screen. That's gotcha. all really there. So this entire thing was lit then by soft overhead lighting. Yes. Is what we were doing mostly. And this is what you hung probably a giant silk up here. Yeah. And just punched a bunch of lights through it. <laughs> yeah. But it was there was custom lights that believe it or not, I, I told the gaffer what I was looking for and he said he had this special thing he had made previously. Mm -hmm. Imagine like a long you know if you got a a, a, a tube, mm -hmm. imagine you cut a bit of it so now it's just empty. Yeah. I believe wires went through there and they had like either five K or ten K you know, it's like a glass envelope. Oh and like that's the bulb and it attached into little sockets. It's totally custom made, tons of them, right? And you would basically just set another line and another line. Yeah. And but, it was just like... But it's a tube, you just go up on strings or a rope like this. It's crazy. That's crazy. You know, that emits the light. But that thing a person can pick up, right? So it's, it's not like a giant space light. It, to rig it, it took no time. You take it down, put it on the other stage because it was just a tube and there's lots of them. Gotcha. So we got a big soft overhead light. As far as our actual talent goes, yep. so 
where, if where would our camera be and what would it well, look like for the Well, when we dollied footage? back right yeah. in the camera, if you saw there, there's a backlight. So probably on the edge of the stage here, there's mm -hmm. probably a big... I'm going to draw a little camera here. Okay. Okay. Want some sticks there's there. Probably big giant. Those are called BFLs. Right? And look, oh, look, sun, yep. and this is sky. Okay. And this is bluish, remember? Yep. So in this case, it's good because the sky is blue. And that's because, again, you were using blue cloth here. Yeah, Slightly dyed. blue cloth dyed. 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 Because nope. if you're on stage and you're talking to the situation... You're using 3200. It's white, so, so. 3200. 3, There's only half blue, so it's probably, what, 4,000. 4, it's only slightly. Okay, so this was made... But then that made the sun seem a little warmer. Of course, so it's so desaturated that you may not feel it. Absolutely. So this made this even warmer. This was about 4,000 Kelvin. Mm. And this was blasting and this would cause a little edge light. Exactly. And then this would give that kind of soft, you know, little microwave light on top right. of them. Exactly. Yeah. And then... And then probably a little eye line is probably like a two-foot Kino handheld, probably. Yeah, so this right here. Two-foot, two... two lens. To kind of make their eyes sparkle. Yep, yeah, like that. <laughs> gotcha. And then as you would cut, cut between different coverage too, what would you adjust? Probably just the backlight and then the slight and the eye light. Yeah. The over the top light just stays for everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, but there, that's interesting. Yeah, that's a very graphic with a shadow that's kind of from the comic book. See that? Yeah, this shot right so, here. So you have to get that shadow there and see the trees, whatever. Mm -hmm. Obviously the, the light had to come from the left. We had to, mm -hmm. to get the specific shadows. So in this case, the for the top shot, you intentionally adjusted your BFL yeah. To give you, you maybe put it here, right yeah. here instead, and that way it would give you to give you that nice long shadow yeah. of a See, person. It's here. very cartoony, but we know that because yeah. in the book it's very cartoony. But there really was a elevated floor with a hole in it hmm. because when they all fall in, they have to fall in this green hole, right? Yeah, and there's it's just about that deep. And there's boxes at the bottom. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, but the lighting kind of sells it. Yeah, and the sets were all raised, like I think four or five feet too, so that the green screen, you know disappears behind the edge of the set. Yeah. Uh, any filtration? Any types of... Uh, uh, only, you know, like only close-ups of, you know, the Queen might have used a little diffusion. Yeah. And that's really just to kind of smooth out the yeah. features. But these days, less and less filtration because there's so many tools in post, it seems like. Yeah. So everyone's saying don't use filtration. Gotcha. But I sometimes still will. Yeah. And the last I want to ask, so kind of Larry Fong's secret sauce. Is there anything that you did on there that maybe doesn't fit into any of these categories to spice up the visual image? 300. Any particular inspirations or particular camera moves? Well, I think maybe the, one of the most iconic shots was this um, this first battle mm -hmm. on 300, where it's this profile shot and you're seeing it's just one long take. Yeah. With the speed changes and it's dolling with Leonidas, you know, for 40, 50 feet. Zach wanted to do that in one take, but also wanted to do this these crazy zooms that will pinpoint different points of, of the fighting, the battle, of what Leonidas was doing at different moments. But he mm -hmm. realized that there's no way that we could possibly operate that and zoom in at all the exact moments because it's going to be slightly different each time and yeah. you'd miss these moments. We decided to shoot it with three different sizes at the same time. And in post, not only do the speed changes, but do the digital zooms and, and stitching yeah. so that those could be decided later in post by an editorial. Oh, oh! It's almost like a it's almost like a bullet cam or something where you have multiple yes. cameras running at the same time. Yes. And the visual quality is already established there. Yes. We just jammed three cameras close together, a wide, a medium, and a long lens, all on one head. Yeah. And then operated so that the tight camera was following what we thought was important. So the medium camera was got too much. The wide camera got way more than you needed. But that was the widest we ever got was the wide camera. But when you wanted to zoom in, you stitched, morphed the wide to the medium and then the medium to the long one. And that's how those zooms were made later. That is awesome. That is so cool. All right, next up we got Super 8. So we're gonna watch this scene real quick. Talk to me and tell me a little bit about the color grading and kind of what you saw that got added. Yeah, Stefan did this too. It's kind of the blue-green contrasty. Of course, it's night, so it's bluish. A little cyan and green in the uh, inside because of fluorescence. You know, yep. nothing new. Yeah. Now this is cool. The shot coming up here, we see the, his reflection in the uh, pool of oil down there, and see this reflection. Mm -hmm. That's a reflection, but because it's a reflection of oil, we had to get like four times as much light on him to get it to actually bounce yeah, off sure. of such a dark substance. Yeah, and by the time it goes up here, we had to dim the light back down again. <laughs> oh! Just to be able to see it in the reflection. This is the bedroom scene with the projector. He's coming in through the window. He's sleeping, he's waking up. It's the middle of the night. 
Mm -hmm. So it's always tricky to do night, right? Because in the bedroom, you're thinking how much of the light is coming through the window. He has no lights on. Mm -hmm. Oh, she comes to the window. This is a really sweet scene. Yeah, this is all on stage. So this was not on location, this was a built set. True. Yeah. And again, tricky, right? Because it's all motivated from the moon, which is outside, but still she's right against the house. Yeah. So how do you get light in her face? These are the things you worry about. I like it. This is a simple narrative scene. I think yeah. this is very iconic of the rest of the movie. Yeah. Oh, yes. It was all coming back to me. So the room. Yep. So I recall there's windows. I can't remember if there's a window there. Windows, windows. So I remember we had soft light. I can't remember how, but we had soft light coming in as moonlight. Okay. It looks bluish, so I'm, I'm sure it's probably half CTV on there. Yep. Of course, it's color temperature blue, it's a gel. Right, so it's probably 3200 because it's tungsten. Okay. I believe we have the same thing here. It's funny because, you know, you can't have moon come from different directions, but that's yep. just what you do. Uh-huh. She came in through this window, desk, bed, and then they sit on the floor. Yep. And there's a projector. And then the projector turns on, and we put a white card there, so when the projector turned on, it would bounce back. When the, when the moon comes through a window, a steep angle, it only lights a certain spot. So to reach further in the room, you usually have more lights coming over the top of the wall. Yeah. That's probably what we did. And you snuck it into the top corner of the wall, right? Because yeah, there's no ceiling. There's no <laughs> ceiling. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's probably over the set wall. People do that on location too, where they'll they'll shoot through a window, but then rig a light in the corner yes. on the inside to extend the effect yeah. of the light, right? Yeah. And so oh, beautiful scene. Oh, it's so pretty, Larry. Um, Why is it so pretty? Yeah, and that's the real projector down there, and she gets closer. That's right. She comes up closer to the screen. Cross. So in this case, this light is actually returning in real time, and then moonlight is being extended. So yeah. It's coming through the windows, giving you all the texture that you want on the floor through the right. actual and window on the frame, people. and on the people. And then you're pushing it even more above the set walls. Yeah, and see that light? I think that's, yeah, that is really the light hitting her hair. I don't remember putting any other light there. So you didn't actually add a backlight on her hair. That's literally projector yeah, light. I think it's, you can see it flickering. They had actually a piece of film in there. The only thing that bothered me is that bright thing behind him. <laughs> yeah. There's no way to flag that off. Sure. It's things like that that But that, that's it, really. Light through the windows, light extending the window light, and then a bounce light. Yeah, see, I hate that bright book. <laughs> Look at that. I hate that. But see, today I would have put a power window on that. And darkened it down in yeah, post. Especially the, next, especially the next shot where it looks like daytime. Nothing worse than super bright things. But that's pretty ballsy because look at her strong acting. And if, you, if it was too dark and you couldn't see that tear and that emotion, then That'd be a waste. it'd be all for nothing. Because it's such a touching, I mean, I cried during She's this so scene good. a little bit. But when it shoots through the room, we had to like make a hole in that wall. I don't know why I love the shot so much, but the reverse, they took, we took the wall off and here they walk up to the camera. This shot, I remember, I don't know why I like that so much. If they're really against the wall, there'd be no light in them at all. So you want to put light, but just barely enough light where it doesn't look overlit. But just enough that you can see what's yeah, going on. Yeah, just one <clears> eye <throat> and then she's back there up and there's an edge that defines them, but it doesn't seem like a big deal. But for that kind of shot where you can easily, easily over light it. it, I just like the amount of light on in there. And you have to think of that at the, at the spur of the moment, right? It's all like, here, lower, lower yeah. would be better, less, yeah, yeah. more, less. For you, cameras and filtration though, was there anything that from the story you were like, this is how I gotta tell this? No, nobody needed filtration for that. With all this TV shooting, you know, primarily with Zach, it's kind of one camera. Mm -hmm. It's so visual that it's one camera. Yeah. Maybe two if there's something crazy. Yeah. But JJ coming from TV, it was three cameras all the time. Mm -hmm. That was really tough. For your people at home, there's usually one perfect angle to light everything from with the yeah. camera. Yeah. And then when you add more, then there's compromises. And if they're, the more they get off axis, that cool side lights now become a front light. And it's just washing or, everything out. Yeah. yeah. Or you can't satisfy all the cameras, unless you're really good. Yeah. Some people can do it. Plus, with all those kids, they have, there's no question, right? Yeah. And kids can't work past midnight, that whole thing. So there's only so much time if you're doing night shots. So I experimented with hard light more on that movie because not only is it appropriate, but with all these children, they could take the hard light. And also, it was also very good for the multiple angles. And you're talking about the hard light because uh, children have less blemishes or things yeah. that they're trying to hide. Right. So I had to find these other ways of getting hard lights up in the air or hiding behind things so that you could, you could shoot more angles. And this way, if it's and an edge light and you go to the side, it's still... I did a lot of where it's edge light one way and the other way, the edge light's the key light and vice versa. And the key light now is a hard light on their face. Yes. That's brilliant though, yeah. 
And that's probably the only film that I've done that you could get away with that. Secret Sauce, do you have anything special in this? That oil reflection was pretty amazing, but for the um, whole movie as a whole, what was something that you like kind of kept thinking, I'm gonna implement some of this? Oh, here's a good example. If you look at the scene, I don't know if you can see it, but half in this guy's room mm -hmm. are these lamps kind of get Home Depot that just you squeeze and they clip on things. Mm, yeah, uh, just work a lamps. Bulb. Yeah, literally work just, lamps. They're all over <laughs> this room, and they're like, whenever I need something, I just clipped it and just put like when we go into the bed. Yeah, it's just clamp lamp. You're kidding me! No. You used Home Depot lights yeah, on this all movie. Over this, this movie when they make the movies and that train yeah. all over the place. In this room, they're down there. Oh, so you put the, you worked with production design almost and just put yeah. that light down yeah. No, there. you can actually see them in the thing. Oh. I didn't use those. And the reason is because they're filmmakers and that's probably the lights that they're using. Yeah. So you'll just sneak yeah. those in and there. I had some in my house too, when I was a kid. Yeah, okay. you mentioned your thing about <laughs> filmmakers and using the simpler and on, on the cheap. So there's a Hollywood movie using Home Depot light bulbs lights. and a clap lights, $5 lights for that. That's awesome. Now, before we go on anymore, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor for this episode, and that is Audible. Yay! If you don't know about Audible, they're basically just the best audiobook company on the internet. And if you're not on that audiobook life, what are you doing? How do you not know about this? Audiobooks are honestly one of the best things you can do to improve your morning commute or just actually become a better filmmaker. That is right, Audible has been adding a ton of books lately to actually help filmmakers study the actual craft of filmmaking. They've got books like How to Not Make a Short Film. They've also got all the famous screenwriting books, so things like Story by Robert McKee, which is literally probably the most famous screenwriting book of all time, other than maybe Blake Snyder's Save the Cat, which, yes, is also on Audible. And yes, I know that you can go to in-person seminars and actually listen to Snyder or listen to McKee, and it costs like $400 to $500, but on Audible, you can actually get these books for free and listen to them on your commute back home from work. For free, because if you sign up with our link, audible.com slash IndieMogul, you can actually start a free trial that includes a free audiobook that you actually get to keep even after the trial is done. For you guys keeping track, you can start listening with a 30-day Audible trial, and you can get your first audiobook plus two Audible original books, which I didn't even know was a thing, but they're free. Again, you can visit audible.com slash IndieMogul, or you can even text IndieMogul, I-N-D-Y-M-O-G-U-L, to 500-500. And now, after you've got your audiobook, we are going back to the episode. So for our last and final scene, we are looking at Batman vs. Superman, camera and lenses. Anamorphic. Was the camera, Panavision camera again? Yeah, when we did Super 8, JJ had his lenses from Star Trek. Mm -hmm. So we kind of rolled over the package because we liked the flares and JJ liked that. That was cool. But for this one, I asked Panavision if we could come up and develop a lens of our own. Ah. Or do some tests, rather. There's different ways you can affect the look of an anamorphic lens. What were you going for here? I didn't want it to be like JJ's flares. Is there something more we can explore? So we tried different combinations of, of, of elements and glass. One glass combination, I realized had like red and blue flare. Because usually it's blue, it's red, so they had red and blue. And I thought, wait, isn't that Superman's colors? And that was the choice. I, go, I think that's the lens we have to use. Not every shot depends how the light hits it, but yeah. when we first see Batman, he goes to this drug dealer's house or something. The cops come in, you see the, the metal throwing Batman thing in the foreground. Yeah. And the flashlights hit it. Yeah. If you remember that, they the, the kind of cool flares, I think they're pretty unique. So that was a fun thing we did with the lenses. Cool. Secret sauce? Ah. <sighs> I would say those lenses, man, are secret sauce enough yeah, as it is. that's pretty cool. I love this scene. <laughs> yeah, this is a great See scene. the bats come out? See we come out of the chimney? Mm -hmm. The bats in the bottom is like, but we really did come out of the chimney. Wow. The there. Yeah, the flare's right there. You see, there's, whoa, red and blue. He comes down the stairs. Okay. Where do you want to draw this? Yeah, that's good. And then there's a, this, these bars, right? These are the jail bars. Here's a bunch of heads of people. There. Yep. And they're all like, please help. Yep. <clears throat> he comes down here and he has a flashlight. Yeah. So the flashlight by itself, of course, is giving a shaft of light, right? Right. And it's blue yeah. because it's either xenon or LED or something. Okay. A flare, flare, flare. A little bit of smoke in the air, at mm -hmm. most, as so, they call it. Fog. So there's haze. Yeah. The main thing lighting this, well, I think that's all there was. There's a light bulb hanging right there. Mm -hmm. and what was that rig to? That was like just hanging off yeah. the cable? Yeah. Just normal yeah. Home Depot light bulb? Yeah. My gosh. And it's warm. So this right here is 32, <clears throat> maybe even lower. 20, 28. Oh, definitely. Definitely down. 28 or something. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now this is weird. I don't know why I spent so much time on this. Down here, for some reason, there are lights that are shining on the back wall. If you go back. What kind of lights are you using here? You just literally I, just- No, I can't remember. I just remember, or... I remember I was had a hell of a time because it was too black back there. So I had to have some kind of something on the wall so it doesn't go completely black. So you gelled some lights to make it green? Yeah. This is, this is a really and green They're push. down there hiding behind something. Yeah. You, you have a couple of them. I can see there's a bunch yeah, of- Yeah, there's a few. And that's usually, it. Usually I make them swing or something, but I didn't there. Oh yeah, and the other guy comes in and so he puts a light on there too. Oh, but see, the, oh yeah, there's a light on him. See, so he has an eye light there. That was definitely a new light. So this is a new light, maybe that's something down little... below here. Were you ever worried about like multi shadows and stuff on some of this stuff? Nope, not for something like this. Welcome it, because it's supposed to be raw and gritty, right? That's awesome. And this is really just silhouetted fog and like a really soft mm -hmm. blue push. Yeah, when you see him coming up the stairs. Yeah. Again, I was thinking, how do I like this? I was set in a quandary. Yeah. All that was, was like I said before, it was just a light pointed at him. <laughs> It's, just like, a, it's like, I can't do this. Just a literal like, light? Like, no looking at me wildly, why are you struggling? It's just, a light, it's just a light over there, just pointing at him, and I made exposure so he was like, you know, one under. All he's doing. Where was that light? So we're talking about when the character comes up here, you had a light. Oh, but just... now it's on another part of the house. Yeah. So, let's um, say, so we cheated it. This is not the literal staircase. No, no. So okay. now he's come up another staircase, right? Let's just say it's over there. Yeah. And he's going up here. Right? And there's those posts or whatever, and the camera's like that. Mm-hmm. So I just have, it's probably just a baby with barn doors. When you soften something, it's such an easy thing to do. You think, okay, and everything's fine. Everyone always usually softens it, right? Yeah. So when you just have a naked one, you always like, can I do that? Can I, do, can I just hit someone with, a, <laughs> with an open, bare right. light? But like, really, it's a scary thing. It's a. It's supposed to be hard lighting. It's okay. It's a haunted house, so that means hard. And Yeah. <clears throat> but I remember sometimes you try to motivate a light so badly, and sometimes you just... Just can't. You just have to throw a light in there. <laughs> you just have to be like, sure, there's a light. Himself. There's a light bulb here. Who cares? Right. But my gaffer, Jim Gertz, for this, he always says the best thing. Oh, where's that light coming from? He goes, the same place the music's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> so to do a quick little recap mm -hmm. on this, um, as far as sort of the storytelling goes, it sounds like it really totally varies movie on movie. Yeah. Depending on what you're going for, mm -hmm. uh, you shot all three of these Panavision cameras on film. Mm -hmm. uh, for two of them, you chose anamorphic lenses. Mm -hmm. As far as lighting goes, when it goes to 300, we're talking about soft overhead lighting. It's kind of an epic movie. We're trying to enhance that. Also, with all the 360 shots and multiple cameras and things like that, we want to make sure that the lights were out of frame. Yep. And for lighting for the second movie, we're talking uh, Super 8. We're going more traditional here. No, hard light because they're kids mm -hmm. and because they don't have a lot of imperfections in the face, we can shine it from outside. Right. Third one here, we're talking about Superman versus Batman, Batman versus Superman. Oh. Really the lighting varies depending on kind of whose characters and story it is. For the grading, we're trying to make the grading as epic as possible in 300. For Super 8, the grading is, you know, it's kind of that classic Hollywood teal and orange. Less orange. Less, Less orange. orange, more teal, because a lot of nighttime right. scenes. And then for Batman versus Superman, I would say it's it's, it's sort of a, a gritty one that was added in the mm -hmm. Coloring. The DC universe tends to be very gritty and real and natural. Yeah. And then for Secret Sauce, we've got the three camera shot, which is crazy in 300. For a second one, of course, we've got the work lights. You were using actual work lights. And then for Batman v Superman, we just talked about it. The lenses. The lenses. The lenses, you found uh, an anamorphic lens that had coatings where the flares would naturally occur that were red and blue. Mm -hmm. And that would sort of match in Superman universe. Yeah. That's something that people haven't seen, yeah. Yeah. Uh, man, I'm, I'm killing it right now remembering yeah, yeah. these. I think it looks pretty damn good. <laughs> There's the episode with Larry Fong, amazing cinematographer, honestly, fantastic work. Thanks so much for watching. Next. Sure. So, are you recording? That's funny, when we were shooting all the stuff on stage at the end of the movie, I remember I was so stressed out that I never felt this way. Like at lunch, I was sitting there like just by myself, and I was like, oh. and this girl, can't want the camera goes, she goes, are you okay? I go, yeah. She goes, you're having an anxiety attack, aren't you? I, go, I know, never had that. She goes, yeah, I have those, that's what you're doing. Really? Yeah, she goes, here, take half Xanax. What's that? Just take it. <laughs>